in the negotiations that we currently are involved with on fishes from Brazil, we are dealing with endemic species living only in restricted areas of Brazil. And you may then automatically think that these fishes all have to come out of the Amazon to get into people's aquaria. But this matter is complicated enormously by the fact that the majority of trade clearly comes from captive breeding in other parts of the world. And with a CITES listing you may get things better under control, but not necessarily. And that is what we in the panel are trying to figure out, whether the CITES criteria are met in a way where a CITES listing actually will be beneficial for the conservation of the species. So we had a proposal, an um, Appendix 2 proposal made by Brazil. So the proposal assesses mainly two species, Potamotrigon leopoldi and Potamotrigon wallacei. They're endemic species restricted to two different river basins within the Amazon basin in terms of uh, freshwater stingrays. Obviously, um, there's legal trade and there's also illegal trade. And we also have captive red specimens, some of them hybrids. Um, the data we're evaluating for stingray is mainly if there'll be um, declines if a listing does not take place. The convention is on trade. So we have to ensure that the ongoing trade, it's not harming in any way the population. And this is something I really like to work with because I believe in sustainable fisheries. I'm primarily evaluating the zebra pleco, which is a very emblematic species of the Brazilian aquarium trade. It's found in a, a restricted region uh, in the Zanyu uh, River uh, in Brazil, uh, and that species has been highly impacted by the construction of a hydroelectric dam. Uh, Brazil started uh, restricting the trade in that species by disallowing trade from Brazil in 2004. Uh, trade has continued at some level. There's evidence of illegal trade in the species. Um, it was uplisted to CITES Appendix 3 uh, by Brazil in uh, 2017, which um, increases the quality of data that's available to us on international trade. But aquarium hobbyists have been readily and actively breeding this species uh, since the 1990s, and there's a large commercial trade in captive bred or aquacultured species of zebra plecos uh, that. Uh, supplies a large portion of the market. The catfish proposed and suggest that there are 100,000 specimens being smuggled out of Brazil every year. And at the same time, the proposal is based on a source, the, 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 the source that says this, also says that it's estimated that there are between 60,000 and 75,000 zebra pecos kept in aquaria worldwide. So where are the 100,000 going? The, the challenge with evaluating science proposals is that oftentimes they're written by non-specialists or people who are very concerned and often rightly concerned about the conservation status of species, but they don't have a lot of information about the population biology or the, the amount of decline that's occurred. And so the, the difficulties rely in that we're trying to review proposals on the scientific merit of the petition that's being made by the proponents to, to list the species. And so it's very important to have the most robust science available when making these decisions. And I think it's probably the largest challenge for the panelists to be presented with a proposal that has very, very little scientific information in it and then trying to determine what's the best available science uh, to make a decision uh, whether the species meets the listing criteria or does not meet the listing criteria. Reaching consensus can be a very challenging thing. I think scientists like, we like to, especially fishery scientists, like to work in a data rich environment. Uh, and almost all of the listing proposals have very little data to support the listings uh, being proposed. Uh, and the conservation community often disagrees with the fishery scientists when it comes to listing criteria. But for this panel, we, we feel very strongly that we reach consensus on a recommendation. Uh, and that 
you know, in a five-day period, going through these uh, these species proposals and working in small groups, and then having plenary discussions on the pros and cons and the merits of the listing criteria. We try to reach consensus, but that's not always possible. Uh, and I think it's very important for any minority view or majority view to be presented in the FAO report. And I think I think FAO in general does a very very good job at trying to reflect accurately the sentiments of the expert panel within its report.